Sunday again. <laughs> he is risen. Each and every day he is alive. We don't have to just wait for one time a year to celebrate that our Lord is alive. Give somebody a high five and say, man, that's good news. He has risen so that we can be risen with him. He is risen so that we can be free from death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Someone should shout amen, brother. Woo. That just makes me excited because we can sing a song that the angels cannot sing. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Come on, lift your hands with me. We are to say so. That is the word of God. It says this is the song of the redeemed, the ransom. That's you and I, come on. Give life at such a price. This is love. And when the Father calls us home, and we see him on the throne, hear the voices sing as one.
on, I know it's Sunday morning. I know it's early. I know it's raining. But we have a lot to be happy about today. He washed us clean. I love that, that the fact that his blood didn't cover our sin, but it washed it away like it never happened. That is true freedom, my friends. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you today for your love that has never failed us, your love that has never abandoned us, Lord God. Even in our worst, you're always your best. Come on, lift your hands with me this morning and somebody thank him this morning for that love, for that blood that he shed, that blood that made us clean. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. so grateful, Lord. Our hands are no longer bound by chains. Our minds are no longer condemned. Our hearts have been set free by you. I pray that the love and the joy and the peace of knowing you would flood this room today in the name of Jesus. And somebody said amen. Let's sing about it.
and give your king some praise this morning. Hallelujah. He is alive. Death yes. has been defeated. He has been resurrected. He sits now at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and me. There is a purpose and there is a plan and there is a reason that you and I are sucking breath today. And that is God is not finished with anybody in this room. That means God's not finished with you, 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 or you that are watching us online right now. God still has a plan for and over your life. Let me say welcome to Graceway this morning. Let me say that you have made the heart of this pastor smile today by coming out in this somewhat yucky weather this morning. I know we wake up in the spring and we are expecting to see the, the, the sun is shining and the clouds are gone away and, and the rain has stopped, but we face the opposite this morning. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. We just want to welcome you here today. Just got some things to bring to your attention this morning before we get involved in our sermon and our time together this morning. I want to pray this morning, but we want to do something very special today because we've got some very special needs that have come to the heart of your pastor this morning. So while I'm talking, I want everybody in this room to do one thing for me. Can you do that? This means yes. This means no. Pastor Michelle, come on up here with me, please. If you look in that pew pocket in front of you, or those of you that are not sitting in front of a pew that's got a pocket in front of it, if you look in the pocket behind you, you'll see some green cards in that pew pocket. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take that green card out this morning. You can fill out the front of that. If you're a guest or a visitor with us this morning, you can fill out as much of that information on the front if you want to. But on the back of that, it's got a section that says, I need prayer today. I want you, everyone in this room, I want you to fill that section out of something that you are believing and asking God for to move in your life. I don't care what it is. Could be the salvation of a loved one. Could be, uh, could be healing from a sickness. It could be a better job. It could be that God would open up the bank of heaven and just pour out blessing and resources. in your, Whatever that prayer request is, I want you to fill that out, and I want you to hold that in your hand because we're getting ready to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and we're going to do something very special today. But listen, I know we've got a very special person with us here this morning. We've got a young lady in our church that has written her first book. Her name is Kara Blake. Kara I get tongue-tied. Kara, Kara, otherwise known as Michelle's yeah. favorite. So she has written her first book, and, and Pastor Michelle and myself have got our copy, and I think Pastor Michelle has gotten hers uh, autographed, but all she wrote the— They're all three autographs. She, she wrote the, the what do you call that, the foreword in the book? I wrote the foreword in the book. for. Uh, I had the privilege yeah. and the honor of, of reading it before it went to print. Yeah. Just let me say a few words, Pastor. Let me tell you. Let me challenge you to get one of these books. Yes. And in the morning or at night, whenever you do your daily reading and your daily devotion, put this book with that and just, just pick a story or a poem in this book to read. I have heard testimony after testimony after testimony of how this book ministers to people. Amen. Kara is 15, Nate, 16, but you would think that a very wise, wise woman in her 90s that has lived a long time wrote the words yes. between these covers. Yes. You can find it on Amazon. Yep. I've got three copies right here for yep. sale. On Amazon, they're 15, but for the church, we're going to sell them for 20 because I believe they should be a blessing to you and a blessing to Kira. So I've got three. Uh-huh. If you want one, come get me after church. And for those of you that are watching us online on Facebook, you can go to Amazon. You can find it on Amazon, download it from there. You're going to be blessed by getting that book in your hands or in your tablet or on your computer. One more thing, Pastor. Yes. I didn't clear this with you, so I'm sorry. I'll ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> the family of God showed so much love and compassion with text messages, with phone calls, with private messages, with flowers to help express to your pastor and my husband sympathy over the death of his grandfather last week. And he shared with you guys last Sunday how hurtful that situation was for him and how hurtful it was for me because I'm connected to him. But I'm telling you, I wouldn't give anything for the family of God. Amen. I would not give one thing 
I wouldn't trade you guys for anything because sometimes your own flesh and blood misses the mark in offering condolences or understanding things, but the family of God has never let us down. Come on, amen. And for that, I am so grateful, and I know that he is grateful for it. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and from his heart for the sympathy and the expressions of sympathy that were shown to him. He was a World War II veteran, 95 years old, yes. with a good life. Yes. When I first met your pastor, he worked with his granddaddy building houses. Yeah. He went to work every day with his grandfather. He was a true, true blessing to this earth. But he's, he's on the other side now, and we have the blessed hope. Amen. One last thing, and I'll shut up, Pastor, I promise. I've already gave one word to Amy. Siley, I love you. And I know this journey that you're on has been, at times, a very trying journey. Doctors have failed you. Man has failed you. But you're not defeated. You're not Come on. defeated. Don't you ever let anybody on this planet or any principality in the air convince you that you're defeated because you're fighting for your life right now. Do you hear me? I pray a blessing over you. I pray a hedge of protection Amen. over you. And I know without a shadow of a doubt the Lord is going to do what we have petitioned him to do. We just don't know when. So hold tight. Yes. Hold strong. You're not defeated. Don't think like you're defeated. Don't walk like you're defeated. And don't talk like you're defeated because you're not. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? I want to bring something to your attention that maybe you haven't noticed yet today, but we've got a new missions uh, event or missions endeavor that we support now through Graceway, uh, and it is the Patat. Penile ministry. We've got the Pennsylvania flag hanging up there, and so that is one of our mission, one of your mission families that you support. And if you look on the walls to my left and my right, you can see the 2021 missions statement for this year is being available. Isaiah 6 and 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. That is your 2021 mission statement for this year. I want to thank uh, Sister Wendy for getting all those things arranged and having all that stuff made up and so we're going to be able to continue to support our missionaries around the world and even those right here in the state of Pennsylvania now we're going to do something different this morning when we pray I don't very often uh, not very often have I mentioned this but I want I want to encourage you this morning I want to encourage you to remain faithful in your giving to the Lord I want you I want you to remain faithful in your tithe and in your offering in your missions offering in your women's ministry offering in the offering for the house of Cherith that, that is going to that place in Atlanta to help help those that are being rescued from sex trafficking but to my right here you'll see a little house made and there's a slot in the top of that house and that is for your missions offering to go in there to help Stephen Day in Honduras to put a roof on a building for, that's going to be used for classrooms and, and a meal area. It's going to be a blessing to that ministry. It's going to be a blessing to that missionary and to that area that he is at. And we know that our goal is to raise $2,000, and we are well on our way. There's some money that's come in through online giving, through your giving, your faithfulness of giving. There's money that's in that box this morning. So I want to encourage you today, don't forget about Stephen Day and the mission project that we are supporting there. And don't forget about supporting the Lord with your tithe and with your offering as well. Offering baskets are on the platform to my left and my right. We do it differently here at Graceway. We don't pass the offering plate. We just leave it there for you to come and for you to sow as the Lord prospers and as the Lord moves and as the Lord speaks to you. But I want you to take that prayer card that you've got in your hand this morning. And there are three very special prayer requests that I know that's come to the heart of, my, of, of me today. The first one is this. One of our missionaries, Promote Anderson, he traveled the world. He was in foreign countries and foreign lands. He's got back to where he is serving the Lord, and now he has tested positive for that dreaded COVID-19 virus. So we need to pray and lift him up. We need to pray for our brother Connor. Uh, is he here this morning? Is Connor, he, he's absent today. Connor Bowens is going to be leaving this next week to go away for some military training, his, his enlistment into the military, and he's going to be going away for a little while, so we need to pray for him that he will be able to complete the assignment that he has on his life. We need to pray for his family, his mom and his dad and his grandparents as well. We also need to pray for a mother of a friend of mine who is suffering with, and, and I'm, I'm going to try not to give too much information, but she is suffering with cancer that has affected her body in two different areas, and they have 
not giving her a very good prognosis, not giving her a very good outcome, but God. Amen. Can somebody say amen? The doctors only know so much, and the doctors can only go so far, and medicine can only do so much. But one hand and one touch from the master can clear everything out. One touch from his hand can wipe cancer away, diabetes away, heart disease away, uh, any kind of illness away, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, muscular dystrophy, any and every affection can be wiped away with one touch of his hand. Do you believe that today? Come on, do you believe that online? If you do, type amen on your Facebook feed there so that our team knows that you're interacting with us. This is what I want you to do. Before we get ready to preach the word this morning I want you to take that that offering envelope in your hand I want you to take that that prayer card in your hand and we want to pray and as I pray I want you to pray I want you to believe that God is going to meet that need that you hold in your hand and when I say amen I want you to bring those cards up here and I want you to lay them in these offering baskets so that I can I can get those cards and I can agree that God's going to move in your life will you do that for me this means yes and this means no I hope everybody will move can we pray together this morning father we love you today God God, we honor you for the day that you have so gifted to us. No matter what it may look like, we know it's a gift that has come down from you because you've given us breath, you've given us life, you've given us another day on this earth, God, that we can be used for the advancement of your kingdom and for the lifting up of your Son and our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I'm praying today, God, that you would touch, promote Anderson's body, God, that you would keep his lungs filled with good air, God, that you would let his body be strong enough to fight off this infection, God, that he would be able to get the kind of care and the kind of uh, compassion that he needs right now. God, surround him with prayer warriors that will lift him up and curse this COVID-19 virus that is in his life. God, we pray healing. We pray a quick healing, a turnaround healing in his life, God, that he can continue to do ministry and he can continue to touch lives. He can continue to see the gospel being, being promoted in the lives of children. God, that he would be an advocate for your healing. He would be an advocate for your touch. God, we pray for Connor today, Lord, who is getting ready this week to leave this state and go to another state to complete the training that he has enlisted for, God. I'm praying, God, that he will be able to successfully complete that training. God, graduate with flying colors and be able to come back home and really get involved in his work and get involved in his enlistment, get involved with his call on his life. God, I pray for Jeff and I pray for Shirley and I pray for the grandparents as well, God, that you would keep them safe and you would keep them stable and they would be an encouragement to him as he prepares to leave, but he's going to come back again. And Master, I pray this morning for Susan. God, I pray you touch her body, that you would touch her life. God, that you would touch this cancer that has, that has attacked and is trying to, 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 to just bring death and devastation to her life and the lives of her family. God, I pray against cancer today. God, I curse it in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Christ. God, we pray that you would overshadow her, keep her family in the palm of your hand. God, and what the doctors say may take place. God, they don't have the final say. Only you do. And we know, God, you are the giver of life and you are the taker of life and you are the sustainer of life in between and God we know that you can hold her in the sustaining grace of your power in the palm of your hand and you can wipe this illness away master I pray for these needs this morning that are going to be brought up here to the altar they're going to be dropped in these baskets God we're going to agree by faith that you're going to touch every area of every of every need that was mentioned this morning God every need that's written down God we join our faith together and your Bible says where two or three agree God as touching any one thing Father, we know it's going to be accomplished, and we agree this morning by faith. We agree in advance before we ever see it that we're going to see you manifested in our lives and in the lives of these, your church, and even these that are online this morning. God, may we be blessed, and may we be a blessing to you today because it's because of you that we live and move and have our being, and we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ. And somebody said amen. I said, somebody said amen. Now, come on, bring those offering and bring those, those, those prayer cards up here and lay them in these baskets on this platform and let us, let us activate our faith this morning and believe God that he's going to move and he's going to do the things that we're asking him to do today. God bless you today as you bring those up. God bless you as you are honoring God. God bless you as you are fulfilling uh, the call of God on your life. God bless you as you are giving us an opportunity as a church to join our faith together. God bless you for a being faithful. God bless you for bringing those needs. God bless you for agreeing with me. God bless you for your life. God bless you for your actions. God bless you for your endeavors this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Woo. 
won't you just smile at your neighbor or give them a high five or a wave as you wave at them this morning and let them know that they're in a good friendly place. You're a guest with us today. We welcome you. This is your first time with us. We hope that it's not going to be your last time. We've got a very good day planned for everyone today. We've got worship. We've got the word and we've got water baptism. Somebody say amen. We got water baptism. If you come this morning and maybe you uh, weren't aware of it or maybe you forgot or it slipped your mind and you want to get baptized, listen, there's no, there's no better time to do that than right now today. And you may have to ride home with wet clothes, but that's okay. If you want to get baptized, you can. Uh, we may not have a towel to give you, but that's all right. Just, just honor God with the obedience that he lays on your heart and your, on your life. We've got some that are prepared to get baptized, and we're going to have that great honor today. I want you to go in your Bible with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. One verse of Scripture I want to look at this morning, but we have to look at it in the context in which it is written, and we have to see what God is saying to us through this one verse of Scripture written by the Apostle Paul. When you get to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want you to go to verse number 58 with me today. And you've been standing for a while, you've been up and down for a while, so you can remain seated this morning, just reverence the reading of the Word of the Lord in the house of God this morning. When you get there, say amen. If you're not there yet and you're still trying to find it, say, oh, me. <laughs> it's the book before 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. This is what Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Therefore, Paul has laid out a foundation of a successful journey for you and for me. He is laying out the foundation. He is laying out the orders that God has brought to his mind that's going to equip and inspire the church at Corinth, but it's also going to affect your life and my life today if we just give our attention to what God is saying to us this morning. Master, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today, God, that you would bless the reading of your word. Lord, that you would help this frail individual be able to, to expound upon the word in such a way that we all understand it and we all will receive it and we all will be transformed by it. Master, I'm praying today, God, that the words that I speak will not be my words, but may they be yours. God, the actions that we have this morning, may our actions be to glorify and magnify and honor you. And God, when we leave this church house this morning, when we go out the doors, when we get in our car and go to our home, God, may we say to ourselves in our rearview mirror, may we say to our wife or our kids, may we say to our grandparents and friends and family alike, may we say to them, it was good to have been in the presence of the Lord. Master, I'm praying today, God, that you would give us all eyes to see. God, that you would give us all ears to hear. God, that you would give us all a mind that can comprehend. And Master, that you would give us all a heart that is prepared and ready to receive. And that you're going to receive glory because of what you do in and through it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, when I read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, and I see what Paul is telling the church at Corinth, I go back and I read the entire 15th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. And I am amazed at what Paul is telling this particular church. I am amazed at the letter of encouragement he is writing to this church. I am amazed at the depths of wisdom he has downloaded to them. But he's talking to them basically about one of two things. He's talking to them either about having a mindset that is earthly and carnal or a mindset that is heavenly and spiritual. He is talking to them about some issues that they are facing as a church and as a people. He is talking to them about faith in God. He's talking to them about the death of Jesus. He's talking to them about the resurrection. He's talking to them about the belief in what God says through his word and what God is telling the church. He is challenging them to understand that what the scripture says and what he is saying to them is the truth. He uses the phrase if a lot in this 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians he uses the phrase if as if to say, if what I'm telling you is not true, then what we are doing is in vain. If Jesus did not die, then our salvation is void. If Jesus wasn't resurrected, we have no hope. If Jesus hasn't gone back to heaven, then we don't have an eternal home. If, 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 he says, we don't have what we say we have if the first doesn't take place. 
But then he encourages and he challenges them to understand that it's not an if, it is because of. Because Jesus died, we've got salvation. Because Jesus was laid in the grave, we have hope. Because Jesus was resurrected from the dead and ascended back to heaven, we have got a place that will be prepared for us. So we don't need to lose hope. We don't need to lose faith. We don't need to lose focus. Even though we may be facing times that are trying and difficult, we need to understand that the word that God said is true. And the things that God did through Jesus Christ is absolute. And we celebrated that fact last Sunday when we celebrated Easter Sunday morning, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I like what Pastor Joe said this morning. You know, today is Easter Sunday as well. He's still alive. He's not back in the ground. He's still alive. He's not back in heaven. I mean, he's not, he's not back on the earth. He's still alive. He's not frail and overdone. He's not overcome. He's not overwhelmed, and he's not defeated. He is always ready to help his sons and his daughters. So today can be Easter for you. Today can be Easter for you, my friend. You know, I think about that thought that God gave me a successful journey. I don't think anybody intends to start out on a journey not to finish well. I don't think anybody, let me break it down for us this morning. I don't think any runner who plans on running in a marathon or running in a race, I don't think that any runner is going to prepare not to finish. I don't think any runner is going to prepare to only run so far and then give up and quit. I don't think any runner is going to look at the route and say, well, I don't know if I want to go that way, so I think I'm just going to fall back and call this one done. No, every runner that runs in a race is prepared to finish the race, and every runner running in the race hopefully is prepared to win the race. They want to be successful in what they are doing. They're not going to set out to fail. They're not going to set out to come up short. They're not going to set out to to not finish. They are going to finish, and they want to finish well, and they want to finish first. Hello, somebody. When your pastor started this this thing of of, of trying to be healthy, I say pastors with an S because Pastor Michelle is with me in this. When we started on this journey of trying to get healthy and stay healthy some years ago, we didn't launch out one day and say, we want to be healthy and and, and we're going to complete it. We we didn't say it's going to be happening in one day. It's not going to be done in one time, in one session. We realize that the be healthy and the stay healthy is a progressive thing. We are on a journey of health. We are on a journey to not let the care of this life and the weightiness of, li- of this life and the, and, the, and the curse of this life to, to zap us of our strength and vitality and energy. Can somebody say amen? But I want to tell you <laughs> that our very first trip, and you know what I'm fixing to say, our very first trip up the road to the boxing gym, we walked in that gym on Memorial Day 2018. It's almost been three years ago. And we went up there for just a little 30-minute session. I want to tell you, man, when, when I left that session, I, don't, I can't speak for Pastor Michelle, but when I left that session, I was soaked to the bone. And I thought to myself, boy, you are out of shape. I, you are way out of shape. You thought you was in shape, but you just got proved that you were not in shape. We started a journey of health. We started a journey of being healthy. And I want to tell you something. It didn't happen on the first trip. It didn't happen on the second trip. It didn't happen on the third trip. And it didn't happen on my 270th class either. I'm still on the journey of trying to be healthy. And so we set out to be successful. We set out to finish well. And hopefully we're not going to quit anytime soon. Can somebody say amen? Matter of fact, I know we're not going to quit anytime soon. Let me tell you why. Because the gym bag in my laundry room has been expounded. When I started, I just had a pair of gloves and a set of reps, and that was it. Now I got three sets of gloves and three sets of boxing shoes and I don't know how many sets of wraps and, a, and, and towels galore and headbands and sweatbands. So I, I listen, I, I can't afford to quit. I got too much invested in this thing. And that's what the Apostle Paul is telling the church at Corinth. You've got too much invested in the journey, and God's got too much invested in you. You've got too much invested on what God is doing, and he's already completed his portion. Now it's up to you to complete your assignment, and you've got to finish, but you've got to finish well. You've got to strive to finish first. You don't need to strive to quit. You don't need to strive to fail. You don't need to strive to give up. You don't need to strive to come in last. You need to strive to come in first. You need to have a successful journey. But he's talking to them about the mindset that they have. It's an earthly mindset, a fleshly mindset, a carnal mindset, or a heavenly mindset, spiritual mindset. 
Which one do they have? And he's, he's contrasting the two in the first part of chapter 15. He's letting them know some things that if Jesus is not who he said he was, and if Jesus did not do what he said he did, and if Jesus is not where he said he was going, then we have no hope. But Jesus did. And because Jesus did, he tells us in the latter part of chapter 15, I want to read it for us in context. The Bible says that now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. He says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption, corruptible, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So then, when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? He says, listen, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Listen to what verse 57 says. But thanks be to God who gives us the the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What he's saying is this. He's saying because Jesus did everything Jesus said he did and because Jesus is where he said he was going, we as the followers of Jesus, you as a follower of Jesus, you as a follower of Jesus are ensured of a successful journey because we have our victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's clashing these two. He's letting these two know that flesh and blood, nor corruption, can inherit the kingdom of heaven. He's letting them know that, that flesh and blood and corruption has got to be transformed. What he's doing here, he's saying, listen, you've got to shift your mindset from an earthly mindset. You've got to shift your mindset to a kingdom mindset. And that's the context in which verse 58 is written. Because he, Paul, writes all of that for us to read. And then he uses the phrase, therefore. In other words, because of all of this, because of everything that's already been accomplished, because of everything that's already been done, therefore, he says, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He's saying because all this has already taken place, there's something you need to do in your life so that you can complete the successful journey that you are on with the Lord. You ask yourself the question, how can we be steadfast? How can we be immovable? How can we always abound in the work? How can we know and not have any doubt and not have any vain thoughts or ideas in our mind. We do all that through Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? We've got to understand what he's saying here. And I, I, I love doing this. Sister Q, you're going to get a kick out of this. I took my concordance and I looked up those words. I wanted to see what the meaning of those words mean. What does it mean to be steadfast? What, does it, what is Paul telling the church at Corinth? And what is he telling Graceway? And what is he telling me? And what is he telling you? Because we are all on a journey and we all ought to be successful. But to be successful because of everything that Jesus has done, there's some things that you and I have got to strive to do. And the first one is this. We've got to be steadfast. We've got to be steadfast. What does that mean? That means that we are not, we are not being uh, uh, moving around. We are not being caught with busy work. We are, we are not being held and being diverted, but we are, we are sitting. We are sedentary. We are not moving, but we are set. He said, be steadfast. Be steadfast. Now, when I think about being sedentary, I think about a body of water that doesn't move, and that body of water that doesn't move, sometimes it becomes smelly and stinky. That's not what Paul is saying. What Paul is saying, he says, I don't want anything to divert you to a place you don't need to go. I want you to remain steadfast. I want you to sit. I want you to be sedentary. I want you to not be so focused on the busy that you miss the God over your life. I want you to be steadfast. I want you to sit focused, not overwhelmed with the busyness of life. How do we remain steadfast? Well, I'm going to give you the answer to that. The answer to that is this, that we become sensitive to the Spirit. 
we remain sensitive to the Spirit of God. And I realize that we are living in a day today where people are becoming desensitized. We see so much ugly and so much negativity and so much darkness and so much of the, of the negative and so much of the wrong that we, we are becoming, as a people, we are becoming desensitized to the things around us. And what Paul is saying is, I don't want you to become so desensitized that you are not sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. I don't want you to become so desensitized with those things around you that you don't have an opportunity that you can sit just for a moment, sit just for a while, sit just for a, a second, sit just for a minute, and really let your heart be sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. Sensitive to what he's saying sensitive to what he's doing, sensitive to what he might be imparting, sensitive to what he might be showing. But we are living in a day where things are so fast-paced that we oftentimes don't have time to sit. We don't have time to be sensitive. We don't have time just to, just to quiet ourselves for a moment because the world is going so fast. But I want to tell you, for a child of God, if we are going to have a successful journey, we have got to learn how to be sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. That means when the Spirit of the Lord says, pray, pray. That means when the Spirit of the Lord says, go, go. That means when the Spirit of the Lord says, speak, speak. That means when the Spirit of the Lord says, do, do. Be sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. I did that on purpose to show you how awkward it is to sit in silence. Even just for a few moments, what's he going to say next? Why has he stopped speaking? What, what's the next point? Because sometimes to be sensitive, we've got to learn how to sit. Be aware of what's around us. Be alert at what's around us, but still be sensitive enough to hear him when he speaks and move him when he says to go and move and doing what he says to do. Well, we've got to learn how to be sensitive to the Spirit. You know, we can be sensitive of everybody's feelings. We, 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 we can be so overly sensitive that we don't want to offend anybody and we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We can be so overly sensitive to them that we miss the sensitivity of the Lord in our life. He says, be steadfast. Set. Don't be so preoccupied with the busyness of life. And don't let the busyness of life divert you or get you all focus. But sit. In other words, keep this in mind. Now, we're talking about a kingdom mindset that because of everything that Jesus has done, we on a journey, we have to be steadfast, sensitive to the Spirit. Sensitive to his words, sensitive to his guidance, sensitive to what he's saying and what he's doing. Many of you are here this morning because you were sensitive to the Spirit. Many are not here today because they're not sensitive to the Spirit. Sensitive to everything else, but not sensitive to what God is saying. What is God saying to us today? What is God saying to the church today? What is God saying to you in your life today? What is God saying to me in my life today? Are we living such a fast-paced life that life overwhelms us and we miss out on what God wants to do in and through our lives? Come on, preacher, preach. Sensitive to the Spirit. He says, be steadfast. Be immovable. Im what does the, the King James uses the phrase immovable. What does that mean to be immovable? What is, what is he saying to us? This is, gonna, this, is going to, this is going to blow your mind. What he literally means is to stir us to another place, to reposition us away from being distracted. He says, I want you to be steadfast, but I want you to be immovable. In other words, we're going to take you from what may be conf confounding you, what may be confusing you, and we're going to redirect you to another place. We're going to put you in another position. We're going to reposition you, and then you need to be, you need to be immovable. You need to be, you need to be so, so, so set where you are that you don't allow yourself to be distracted. He's going to stir you to go to another place.
In other words, what he's saying here is I want your mindset to change from the mindset of the world and everything in the world. I want you to be repositioned to a kingdom mindset. And once that repositioning takes place, I want you to stay there. Once that repositioning occurs in your life, don't try to leave that position. Once you've been, once you've been provoked to go to another location, stay there. Don't let yourself be pulled back into what you just got, just got repositioned from. Be immovable. I am right here. I am not going anywhere. This is where you have repositioned me. This is where you have stirred me to be. I'm going to stay right where I am. Steadfast. Immovable. How are you immovable? How do you become unmovable? Immovable. Well, what you got to do is you have to be specific in your prayer. Specific in your prayer. You know, when I read through the Bible and I read that, you know, people, times people came to Jesus with needs, they would come to Jesus and they would not give a generic need, they would give a specific need. Lord, I need you to come to my home. My servant lies at the point of death. But I know that if you just speak a word, you can heal him. He didn't say, Lord, touch my, touch my servant's life. Jairus didn't come and say, Jesus, my daughter is not feeling well, so can you just bless her health? He said, my daughter is at the point of death. She's there. They were specific in their needs, specific in their requests. When Jesus stopped on the journey and called for the blind man to come to where he was at, he said, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said that I might be able to see. He didn't say, I want you to touch my foot, touch my hands, touch my legs, or touch my arms. He said, I want to be able to see. He gave a specific request to the one that could meet that need. We become unmovable when we realize we can take a specific need to God and God hears that specific need and then we know God can move in that specific need. Specific. Specificity. You know, when I got engaged and when I got married to my beautiful bride, <laughs> some years ago, I asked her a specific question. I was looking for a specific answer. And I didn't want to hear, I'll think about it. Maybe. I'll consider it. Mm -mm. I wanted to hear one. I wanted to hear that yes answer. Just like when we, when we take our request to God specifically, we, we, listen, we, we got to know that he's going to answer that. He's going to answer that request. He's going to answer it one of three ways. So it's going to be yes, no. Or wait. Never is it going to be maybe. I'll think about it. Let me pray about it for a moment. It's going to be yes, no, or wait. It's going to be yes, I'm going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. Or you're going to have to wait for me to move in that, in that matter in your life. When you bring a specific request to God, understand what you are doing is you are showing him that you are not wavering. Listen, you don't ask somebody for something specific if you don't have faith that they're going to be able to answer what you're asking them for. Specific. And I've, I've been guilty of this. I, none of you have. This is just me. Facebook, this, don't even, this ain't even for you either. But I've been so generic sometimes in my prayer. Lord, bless me today. Lord, be with me today. Lord, help the church today. Shame on me for saying that. Shame on me for praying that. Lord, I want you to give me strength from heaven today. God, I want, you to be with, I want you to be with Sheila and Derek today. I want you to be with Joe and Linda today. I want you to answer a need in their life today. I want you to move in their home today. I want you to give them wisdom and vision today. I want you to give art a stronger faith today. Those are specific requests, not generic requests, not generic prayers. Listen, we got to be immovable. we got to be specific in our requests. That's why I purposefully had you write down your request on that green slip of paper. Because it gets you to think about what specifically am I asking God for? What do I need God to do in my life? What am I believing he's going to bring to me? Specifically. That, listen, when you can get specific with God, it grounds you. It keeps you set. It keeps you from, from not moving. You've already been repositioned. And because you are immovable and can be specific in your prayer request, you can, you can, you can stay there and you cannot be distracted. And God, you can know that God is going to meet that need and you're going to answer that need in your life. He said, listen, I want you to be steadfast, immovable. 
Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work. What does that mean, always abounding? What does it mean to always abound in the work of the Lord? That means what he's literally saying there. He says, I want you to have more. You're going to make more. You're going to increase in your abundance in the work of the Lord. How are we going to abound in the work of the Lord? How are we going to keep abounding in what God is doing? Listen, we've got to be sensitive to his spirit. We've got to be specific in our prayer. And we've got to be strategic in our actions. Hello? A runner that's running a race has to be strategic in what he's doing. He has to be strategic in how he's training. He has to be strategic in what he's eating. He has to be strategic in how much time he gives to what he's trying to accomplish. Strategy. Listen, when men of war go to war, they don't just pull a strategy out of nowhere. They have to study. They have to look at the landscape. They have to know their adversary. They have to know their enemy. They have to know how they attack him, when they attack him, where they attack him. And they have to have a strategy of how they're going to overcome that adversary. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always increasing in your ability to work for God. Always having more in your life so that you have more and that you can do more. He wants us to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. Not our work and not our way and not our will, but his work and his way and his will. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Jesus is a perfect example of how it is to abound in the work of the Lord. He said these words, not my will, but thy will be done. Not what I want to do, but what do you want to do, Lord? If I could choose, I would rather go a different way, but I realize that this is not going to bring abundance into the kingdom of God. So I want to abound in what you are doing, so I want to be able to do it your way, and I want to be able to do it according to your will. We have to be strategic in our activities. Strategic, I told you earlier that when we started this journey of health so many years ago (laughs) our first trip there I asked a guy that was beside me on his bag I said how are you doing he said I'm doing good I said how how long have you been doing this he said for a while now I said are you seeing any any results of this he said well he said I feel like I'm getting stronger but I can't seem to lose the weight because I just I, I don't I haven't changed my diet I haven't changed what I'm eating I'm still eating bad stuff, and so I'm coming. I can feel like I'm getting stronger, and I'm I'm getting energy, but I just, I'm not seeing the results I want to see. (laughs) you got to be strategic in what you are doing for the Lord. Sister Wendy is strategic in what she's doing for the Lord. She is strategic in planning a missions conference. She is strategic in putting the, the banners up. She is strategic in making it a way so that you can see what Grace Way is up to in 2021. Listen, I don't know if you realize it or not, and I really didn't realize it until I looked at the banners when I hung them up, but she's got the phrase available. Available. You say, preacher, why does that make you so happy? Because our goal is to accept, align, and activate. Our goal is to know that anybody can be accepted here, that anybody can be aligned here, and anybody can be activated for the power of God here. What does that do? That creates the ability for you to become available. Here I am, Lord, send me. That's strategic. Here, Who's going to go for me? Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, send them. (laughs) Here I am, Lord, send her. I'm here, Lord, but I I want you to send them instead. No, strategic in our activity. Listen, when Pastor Joe, when he gets ready for Sunday morning, he is strategic in planning the songs that he sings and the musicians that play. He don't just come to church at 9.30 and say, well, guys, I think we're just going to sing these this morning and and hopefully it'll be good. No, he strategically plans the worship set for you to enjoy. When I get ready to preach on Sunday, I don't get up Sunday morning at 6 o'clock and open the Bible and say, okay, God, what do you want me to say today? I got the greatest compliment that I had for preaching in, in a long time. We went to dinner with some friends the other, the other day, and, and we were talking to, the, to these friends of ours, and, and they were saying, you know, how that, you know, you, you preach. You're a preacher. You, the things you do, uh, you do for the kingdom, and you do for us, and we see that. She says, she, oh, I gave it away. She said, uh, you have to figure out who the she and the he is. I'm not going to tell you who they are. She said, this is what I envision that you do, Pastor. On, on Monday morning, you get up and you ask God, God, what do you want me to preach to the church on Sunday? And on Tuesday, you might get a little, a little idea or a little nugget. You might write it down. On Wednesday, you might say, God, is this really what you want me to say, or is this something I've come up with on my own? 
praying about it. On Thursday, you might start getting Scripture and putting context together, finishing it up on Friday and praying over it on Saturday. She doesn't follow me around in my week. She doesn't know what I do, how I get prepared. But she read my mail, man. It takes strategy to do anything well for the kingdom of heaven. It takes strategy to finish your journey successfully. It takes strategy. You got to be sensitive to the spirit. You got to be specific in your prayer. And you got to be strategic in your activities. In other words, I can't think I'm going to go up to boxing four or five times a week and work up a sweat and get energy and then go sip on milkshakes and McDonald's uh, hamburgers and french fries and and eat a a pound cake at night at 10 o'clock. That ain't going to happen. Might cause me to have a premature coronary, (laughs) but it ain't going to cause me to get in shape. You got to be strategic in what you do for the Lord. What are you doing for the Lord strategically in your life? What are you doing for the Lord today that is strategic that will that will that will enable you to have an ex- a successful journey? S- sensitive to the Spirit, specific in our needs, strategic in our actions. Then he says, "Listen, listen to what he says." In the last part of verse of verse fifty-eight. He says, "Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord." Because of what Jesus has done, because of where Jesus is, you got to know that your labor is not in vain. What's he saying there? What he's saying there is I want you to be able to perceive and to discern this clearly as if you have your eyes wide open. To perceive and to clearly understand with eyes opened. What's he want us to understand? He wants us to understand that we're going to be sensitive to the Spirit, specific in our prayer, strategic in our activities, and here we go, settled in our faith. Settled in our faith. That's what Paul is telling the church. Because of everything Jesus has done, you need to remain settled in your faith in him. Don't let your mindset get shifted. Don't let your mindset get clouded. Don't let your mindset uh, entertain the doubts and the, and, and, and the dysfunctionality of what's around you. Remain settled in your faith. Because, God, you've done this through Jesus Christ, I'm going to do this because I know that what I'm doing is not in vain. I know that I'm not going to do something that's not going to have a return. I know that I'm not involved in something that's going to end up being nothing. I know that what I'm doing, God, because of what you've done for me through Jesus Christ, you give me the strength to do what I'm doing for you, and I know that it will not be left up to zero. It will not be in vain if it's done unto the Lord. What does the Bible say? The Bible says any man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back. Any man that puts his hand to the plow, looking back, he says, it's not fit. What's what's he saying? What he's saying is you've got your hand on the plow, you're moving forward with a kingdom mindset, and then you let your head twist around, and you look back with a worldly mindset. He said, you're not fit for the kingdom. Why? Because your faith is not settled. Now, am I saying we never have challenges to our faith? Absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying at all. It takes faith to operate in this kingdom mindset every day because it's so contrary to the world. What does Paul tell the Galatian church? He said, listen, the flesh is warring against the spirit, and the spirit is against the flesh. He said, the flesh wants to fulfill the lust thereof, but the spirit wants to bring fruit to your life. And these two mindsets are diametrically opposed. They cannot exist in a child of God at the same time. You can cannot have a worldly mindset and a kingdom mindset at the same time. It's like oil and water. It don't mix. Not fit for the kingdom. Be settled in your faith. I don't see it, but God, you've said it. So I am settled, and I'm going to keep my faith in you and know that it's going to happen. I haven't experienced it yet, but God, I know what you said. It hasn't manifested in my life just yet, but I'm not going to give up because I know it's what you have told me about my life. Be settled in your faith. Settled, what does that mean? That means that we've got the eyes of faith. Our eyes are wide open. That means that we can can perceive and we can discern clearly. You know, because we live by and not by. There you go. You have me preach now. We live by faith and not by sight. Listen, you have a kingdom mindset, that's going to require faith in your life. An earthly mindset or a fleshly mindset is going to operate by what we see with our natural eyes. 
He said, you want to you, you have a successful journey? Paul is telling the church at Corinth, because Jesus has done all of this, and you are on the journey now. Don't give up. He says, this, and because of everything that's happened before you, therefore, therefore, he says, my beloved, because of all of this, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. How are we doing those things? I just gave them to you this morning. Sensitivity to the Spirit, specific in our prayers, strategic in our actions, and settled in our faith. Be settled in your faith. Know who you are in God and know who God is in you. When the kids were little, they were going to school, I would drop them off from a work van. Our daughter, I'm learning now years later, they hated me to take them to school in that work van. They hated it even more for me to pick them up in that work van. And they would often stretch the truth. No, they would often lie and say they had things to do after school so I wouldn't show up in the middle when all the other kids were getting picked up. But when I would let them out, I would tell them, remember who and whose you are. I'd wait for they got halfway down the walkway, and then I would shout it out where everybody around them could hear what I said. I will say the same thing to you this morning. I will say the same thing to you this morning. Remember who and whose you are. Remember who you are in Christ, and remember who Christ is in you. And because Christ has done everything he's done for you, let your faith in him be settled. Let your faith in him be secured. Let your faith not, let let it not waver, and let it not give up. If he has spoken a word of you over your life, hold on to that word. If he has given you a vision, hold on to the vision. If he's given you a promise, hold on to that promise. Don't let your faith waver. If you're going to be successful, you've got to be settled in your faith. Hello, somebody. Preach on preacher. I think I will. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Settled in your faith. Is your faith settled? Is your faith secure? Is your faith set? on the need that you wrote down on that piece of paper this morning? Or is it determined by, I'll let you fill in the blank? I'll tell you, if you're believing God to do what you wrote on this paper for him to do, it's going to require a settled faith. Because the Bible says, he that comes to him must believe that he is. Hello? And that he is a rewarder of those that will half-heartedly seek him. No, it says diligently seek him. I'm just having fun with you this morning. Pastor Joe, come on up today. It says without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it is impossible to receive anything from God. Can I say it that way? Listen, we are saved. We are saved through faith. Hello? We are sanctified through faith. Hello? We are baptized in the Holy Ghost through faith. Hello? We are set free through faith. We are healed through faith. We are, we are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. That is an example of your settled faith. Are you hearing what God is saying to you this morning? You want to be sensitive? Be sensitive to him. You want to be specific? Get specific with him. You want to be strategic? Be strategic with him. You want to be settled? Be settled with him. That, my friends, is the recipe for a successful journey. And we're all on a journey together. We haven't none arrived yet. My grandfather did several days ago. He arrived at his journey successful. We've had several in our church since we've been here that have arrived at their... They've arrived at their journey successful. There's a place for you and me. And I want you to arrive successfully there. I want you to arrive successfully. Not just, as I've heard some saints, I'm just, if I can just barely squeak in, I don't want to barely squeak in. I want to blow the doors off the hinges. Hello? Well, if I, can just have a, if I can just have a shack over in the corner. I don't want a shack in the corner, baby. I want a mansion right, on the, right in the middle of heaven. Hello? I'm ready. I, I want to be able to finish my journey and to be successful in my journey. 
Some of us have been on a journey for a while. Some have just started. Others have finished. But we're all in a journey together. What's, what, what's it going to take? It's going to take what Paul said. Therefore, my beloved brethren. What are you saying? Therefore, family. Therefore, family. Be steadfast. Set. Not being pulled around. Not being diverted. Set. Immovable. Allowing God to reposition you from some things to get you in the place where he needs you to be. Because until we get to the place where he needs us to be, we will not be able to, to be and remain immovable. But once he gets us to that reposition place, remain there. Abound in the work of the Lord. Have an increase, an abundance. The more you do, the more he gives you to do. The more you do, the more he gives you to do. The more you do, the more he gives you to do. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that's not in vain. Knowing my life is not being lived in vain. My work's not been done in vain. My actions aren't in vain. My, 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 specific, my specificity is not in vain. My sensitivity is not in vain. Know it. Believe it. Hold on to it. That's how we can arrive there successfully. Would you stand with me this morning? I want to pray for you this morning. But I've got three, I should have at least three individuals that are being baptized today. Sister Julie's going to help today. So those three individuals that are being baptized today, when we get finished praying, if you will, I'm going to go down to my office and get prepared. But a few three that are being baptized, if you'll go out the side door to my left, they go upstairs. There's a room up there that I'll meet you in in just a few moments and you can be prepared. If you need to change your clothes, you can. If you're here this morning and you say, well, I didn't come prepared to be baptized, but I would like to get baptized today. Listen, don't let it stop you. You can go up there and we, we, we can take care of that as well today. You can hand me that basket. crazy for the Lord than sane for the world. I'm gonna, that was good. That should be, that's tweetable there. I'd rather be crazy for the, for the Lord than sane for the world. I'm going to pray for you this morning. And then Pastor Joe is going to lead us in singing. And I'm going to exit and go down and get ready for baptism. you to stretch your hands up to heaven. Just lift your hands to heaven. What is that, what is that a representation of? That's a rep representation of our, our humility and our submission to his authority and his will. Father, today in the name of Jesus Christ, we have gathered the Sunday after Easter to declare to the church and to declare to the world and to declare to ourselves that you are still alive. Yes. You are still on the throne. You are still saving lives. You are still transforming lives. You are still regenerating lives. You are still restoring lives today. You are still meeting needs. You are still working out miracles. You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. Master, this basket is full of green slips of paper that my family has written down their prayer needs on God and I'm praying that you would miraculously move in every area of their life today. Whatever that need is, God, be it a physical healing, God, I'm praying that you would rend the windows of heaven and pour out your blood and let that blood bring a healing to somebody's life today. Master, if it's a financial, if it's a financial miracle, God, I pray that you would, that you would bankrupt this world to meet the needs of your children. You tell us that our needs are being met by your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. 
Master, if it's a restoration of a relationship today, God, I pray that you would that you would begin to tear down any wall of separation, isolation, confinement. God, that those relationships can be restored, regained. Love can be launched again. Master, I'm praying for families today. God, families that are going through undue stress, undue chaos, undue uncertainty. God, let the Spirit of God settle down on that mom and dad's mind today. Let the Spirit of God settle in that home. Let the house they walked out of not be the house they walked back into, but God, may they walk into a house that is filled with peace and joy and your love and your presence. Master, I'm praying today for anyone under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you as their Savior. Anyone in this room, anyone on Facebook right now, God, that at this moment would humble themselves and simply ask for you to come in and to forgive their sins and to wash their sins away and to cleanse them and make them now a new creature in Jesus Christ. Let them submit themselves to the authority of your Spirit. Let them open the door as you tug on their heartstrings. And as you ask, God, move in. God, when you move in, all of heaven moves in. All of your power and your authority moves in. All your restorative characteristics move in. All your redeeming qualities move in. Let your miracles happen in people's lives today, Lord, that are in this church and are watching us online. And God, may you receive glory as we as your body remain sensitive, specific, strategic, and settled, you will see that we will finish our journey and we will finish it successfully. In Jesus' mighty name. And somebody say amen like you believe it. I said say amen like you believe it. Come on, type amen like you believe it this morning on your Facebook feed. Type it in there. Amen, amen, and amen. Pastor Joe's going to lead. We're going to get ready. We're going to have baptism. Don't leave just yet. Let's honor these three this morning as we can see the testimony of what God is doing in their lives today.
this morning. How many of you have been through the darkest night and he's never left you? Come on, lift your hands with me and sing, you are good.
represented in their life and how there's nothing magical or mystical about these waters nothing magical or mystical about this ceremony this is simply a reflection and a representation of what God has done in their heart and in their life now let them know how that being baptized is identif in a identification of Christ's death burial and resurrection and so I'm excited today to have these, at least these three to baptize. And maybe some of you may, may feel inspired to get baptized as we do this. I'm not sure. But it's, it's an honor to be able to baptize these three in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done in their life. So I'm going to lay the microphone down and bring them down one at a time. I think they want to take some pictures of them while, before they get baptized. So I'm going to lay the mic down here so it should hopefully pick us up. Sound guys, I'm not sure if you want to turn the volume up or not. I'll leave that up to you. Hopefully it won't fall into the water. If it does, it's Sister Shirley's fault and not mine. <laughs> I'm kidding. But you may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord.
success. The microphone did not fall. <laughs> Brother Eric, you come to get baptized? <laughs> Stay in your seat. I'll open up as, if anybody if anybody wants to get baptized now is your time to move. We will baptize you before we have our final prayer this morning. I'll wait. All right, would you stand with me today? I'm sure Pastor Joe is going to do a great job and sing us out this morning. Oh, but God bless you for being here today. God bless you, Facebook and YouTube audience, for joining us today. We, we know that God is going to minister to you right where you are. Thank you for staying around today to celebrate the, the, the testimony of these three individuals that testified of God in their heart and their life by baptism today. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face shine upon you. God lift up his countenance to you and give you peace in Jesus' name. We'll see you Wednesday. Until then, peace. We love you. I was just watching to see what y'all are going to do. <laughs> how many are thankful he rose from the grave? Come on. That's what this symbolizes here. But how many know he's coming back again?